Hi everyone! In this video, I will show you how to deploy a Python application to Azure Container Apps using Docker. Now, this is the application that we have built in one of my previous videos. I can show you what it does. So, basically, it's a computer vision application where you can upload an image to this application. For example, if I go to the ones that we have used in the video, here you can see an Eiffel Tower image. You can click Analyze and it will show you what is on the picture. So some captions, some more captions and some tags for the picture. In this video, we will take this application and deploy it to Azure Cloud so it's publicly accessible. Now, this video has two prerequisites. One, you need Docker Desktop installed and running on your machine. Just Google for Docker Desktop, download and install it. And then you need a Docker Hub account. Just go to hub.docker.com, click sign up and create a free account. And then of course, a self-explanatory requirement, you need a Microsoft Azure account. How to create a free account? I will leave you a link in the description for the video where I explained it. Now back to Visual Studio Code. First thing we need to do is we need to make some changes to the structure. So inside our folder, I will click an app folder and I will move everything into the folder. This is to avoid later on copying files into the root directory of our Docker container. Now here we need to create a new file. We'll call it Docker file. It has to be outside of the app folder. Now inside the Docker file, we'll specify all the steps necessary to build our Docker image. So what we'll say is from Python, 3.10-slim. This is our base image. Now we will select our working directory, but this is an inside the container working directory. This is important because now when I will be speci specifying what files I want to copy, I will be saying still the like slash app here and I will select here the pip file and app slash pip file dot log and I will copy them to the app working directory. Next, I will install all the dependencies, but I will not use it, not do it using pipenv, I will do it using pip. I don't like using pipenv inside a Docker container because I just don't want to have an additional, let's say, virtual environment to manage. So I will, first off, I will install the pipenv because I will still use it in order to generate the requirements file that I will later on install with pip. So I'm saying run, run pip and requirements and I'm piping this to a requirements.txt file. Then I'm saying pip install dash r to install it from the file requirements.txt. This block will first generate the requirements list and later on install all the requirements. And I'm doing this right now before I copy the contents of our app folder to the container, to the working directory of the container, because when we are creating the image, these steps will take a while. So installing all the dependencies will take a while. And these steps, if nothing has changed before during the build phase, are cached. So it means if we will be recreating the same image multiple times, they will not be executed once again, but they will be just used from the cache. So this significantly improves the pace of creating of the Docker image, which usually takes a while. And the dependencies that we have change much less than the code itself. Therefore, I just copy the code here so that if the code changes, the previous steps do not have to be repeated. They can just be taken from the cache. Now, two last commands. We need to expose the 8501 port. This is the default port where the streamlet lands. So this is where our application serves content. And then we need to set a CMD, so a command that will be executed as the default command when the container starts. So it is streamlet run app.py in my case. And if you are deploying a different application, this command of course will be different to you. Now we need to do one more thing. We have this .env file here that contains some secrets that we don't want to put in a Docker image because we will commit the Docker image to the public Docker Hub repository. 
This is why we need to create something called dot docker ignore file. And this dot docker in this dot docker ignore, if we put a file, it will not be copied to the image itself. Therefore, we put dot env here and we will be providing the environment variables in a different way to our container. Now, after we have done all of this, we can start building the image. So we say docker build. Now we say dash t to tag it. And now here you put the name from your username from Docker Hub. So this is mine, you'll have a different one. And then we must here name the image. So I'll just name it computer vision AI. And now to give it a version, I will just say latest. And I will make a dot. The dot signifies that we want to build this image from this directory that we are currently in because our Docker file is here. So I'll just say enter. And now the image will be built. I will see you once this is finalized. Now that our image has been created, I like to test it before we push it to Docker Hub in order to resolve any potential issues quicker. So we are saying docker, docker run to create a container out of the image. We need to forward our ports. This means we are mapping a port from your local machine to the port on our container. So we are mapping 8501 to 8501. That's the simplest. And we also did not copy the .env file. So we need to provide a path to the .env file that we will be using. So basically this will interactively create the environment variables inside the container so that our application can still run even though the .env file is missing. And these we will configure when we will be deploying uh, to Azure a little bit different. And now the name of the container, once again, the name of your uh, Docker Hub username. And then we are just saying computer vision dash AI because this was our name and then a latest. And let's press enter and let's run it. Now we can see that the application is still running. I'm I can try to repeat what we did, maybe with a different image and we are still getting a description. So here everything is up and running. Now I have stopped the application. What you need to do now is say Docker login. And for me, it will just say that the login has succeeded. For you, if you are doing it for the first time, you will need to go over a few prompts. You will need to input your username and password. Now that you have done it, we can push the image to Docker Hub. So you have to say Docker push. And now the name of your, so the username of from Docker Hub and then slash the name of your image. So the same image we have used with Docker run and also with the tag. So it will now push the image to Docker Hub and I will see you once this is finalized. The image has now been successfully pushed to Docker Hub. This means that when you go to hub.docker.com and log into your account, you should see the container or the image, sorry, right here. Last push two minutes ago, you can see that I just did it. And this is important. So next step in this video, we'll move on to the Azure portal and deploy our application to container apps. We are in Azure portal right now. So you will click on create a resource. I could just click here, but you most likely don't have this in the recent tab. So I will just say contain, container apps and it should find the container apps Azure service. Make sure you are selecting Azure service. Let's click on create. In here, you need to select your Azure subscription and your resource group. If you do not have a resource group, just click on create new. It's super simple. And then container app name, let's just say computer vision AI as we did before. Here we are selecting container image because we will be building a container from a Docker file. I'm in Poland, so I'm selecting Poland here, but select what's the closest to you. And here I'm leaving the default value. Let's then say next. So what we have here is here we'll need to input um, that we are using Docker Hub. 
we are creating it out of a public image. Here we are leaving docker.io and here we need to put the image and the tag. So it will always be your username and then forward slash computer vision.ai this is the name of our image and then the version which is latest we are not overriding any commands here we can just select the lowest uh, cpu and the memory settings this will allow us to keep the the costs down as much as possible once again if you created a free Azure account, you get this $200 starting credit and this should be absolutely sufficient to cover any cost associated with this deployment. I even think that this container apps is among the free services. So here really doesn't matter what you select. And now we come to the environment variables and this is the point where here we need to copy the environment variables that we had in the .env file. So I will now do it. Okay, we have the vision key and vision endpoint set and I will of course remove the resources before publishing this video. So it's not an issue that I'm showing it currently to you. Here, we don't need to have anything, but we do need an ingress. We need to enable it. We need, let's just accept traffic from anywhere. And here you need to put 8501, which is the port that we'll be using. We don't need any tags. And now once this is passed, we just can say create. And I will see you once the deployment is finalized. Once the deployment is done, you should see something like this. Now you go here to computer vision AI, because here it is what is interesting. This is this application URL. Let's go to it. And you can directly see we have our streamlit app. Once again, we can select the picture, analyze it, and we get the description, meaning everything is working. And now this is in a publicly accessible URL which means that you have successfully deployed the application to container apps service in Microsoft Azure. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you in any way, shape or form, please leave a like and leave a comment. It helps me a lot to allow these videos to reach other people who might need the knowledge. Thank you for watching once again. Have a nice day and see you in the next videos.